Research has shown us time and time again that retail investors like you and me are actually terrible at investing. One such study showed that between 1926 and 2002, the average US retail investor underperformed the market by 1.3% per year. Now, 1.3% might not sound like much, but over a 30 year investing career, that would leave you with 40% less at retirement. So why does this happen and how can you stop it? Well, you're about to find out. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new here, hi, my name is James. I am a financial planner, and this is a place where you can learn to make smarter financial decisions. When you first start investing, it seems like the only problem that you need to solve is deciding what you're going to invest in. I say the only problem, it's actually a pretty big one. And when you first start out, it can seem like an impossible mountain to climb. First, you'll need to learn about how the stock market works, and then all the different ways that you can choose to invest in it, whether it's individual companies, ETFs, funds, and then you're gonna to have to learn about the huge number of different confusing terms and acronyms that come with each of these. And then once you've mastered that, you then still gotta learn about pensions and ICEs, investment platforms and tax. But with enough time and effort, you will eventually get there because all of this stuff can be learned online for free, hence the purpose of this channel. And of course, there's not just one solution to this problem. You could decide to become a dividend investor, or you might choose to invest your money through professional fund managers, or you may find that you prefer the simplicity of just sticking with an index fund. But whichever it is you choose, you will have found a tried and tested strategy for investing. And the rest should be pretty straightforward because now all you need to do is stick with it. So you start investing. And at the beginning, it's likely that you're going to see success. After all, the stock market does go up more than it goes down. And you'll probably start to question why you spend so much time dithering over this when it actually seems pretty easy. This may continue for a few weeks, months, or even years. And over that time, as your portfolio grows, so will your confidence and you'll invest more and more until something happens and the winds start to change. Your investments will start to lose momentum and then they'll start to fall. At first, it will be easy to ignore because you've seen volatility in the past and this is nothing new. But then the headlines start rolling in, saying that World War III is just around the corner and inflation is going to cause a recession. And as the markets continue to fall, you'll find it harder to ignore the news, which is predicting that the worst is still yet to come. And you'll start to get this uneasy feeling in your gut, but you'll steady yourself because after all, you're invested in a tried and tested strategy and all you need to do is stick to the plan. But the markets keep on falling and now you've lost five, 10, 20% of your life savings and the real doubt starts to creep in. Maybe you got it wrong somehow, or perhaps this time is different. And aided by the YouTube algorithm, you find yourself diving into a rabbit hole, gorging on content that confirms your fears. You find big famous investors preaching about the demise of markets, telling you to sell stocks and buy gold. And you start to think about selling, but you can't because you've got to stick with the plan. But this time is different and it all looks so bad. And then finally it gets too much and you sell. No matter how much research and preparation you do, nothing can prepare you for the emotions that you'll feel when you're in it. Perhaps you've experienced this recently, or maybe you're feeling this right now. Up until this point, you probably thought the hardest part of investing was deciding what to invest in. But actually, that's the easy part. Instead, the greatest challenge that you're going to face is your ability to control your emotions. Because our brains are just not built for this stuff. We're basically just big chimps that are consumed by emotions like greed and fear that have evolved over millions of years to keep us alive. But they're poorly adapted for the stresses and strains that come with investing. Our greed keeps us buying more when the market is high and rising, whilst it's our fear that makes us sell or delay investing when the market is low or falling. It's our emotions that cause us to make all the wrong decisions at the wrong time. And that is why, even if you're following a simple fund-based strategy, you'll likely see worse returns than the funds that you're investing in. 12 months ago, I made a video that looked back at one of the most popular actively managed funds of the last five years, Kathy Wood's ARK Innovation ETF. And I demonstrated that as the fund had started to perform well, the inflows into that fund had increased 
dramatically. So much so that although this fund had performed well during that period, most investors had actually seen a negative return because they'd invested right before the recent dip. As it happens, since I made that video, that fund has now gone on to fall by another 50%. And even though the fund itself is still up a lot over five years, most of its investors are sitting at a big loss simply because they invested at the wrong time. In 2007, Friesen and Sapp conducted a study to investigate the gap in performance that retail investors were seeing compared with the funds that they invested. And they showed that between 1991 and 2004, the typical investor in a simple index fund underperformed by 0.6% per year, whilst investors in actively managed funds underperformed by 1.56% a year. To make sense of this, we need to think about the types of investor that each of these funds will attract. Index funds typically attract investors that are happy settling for the market return, and they're really just looking for rational simplicity. Whereas an actively managed fund that's promising market beating returns is going to appeal to our sense of greed, and therefore it's likely to attract more emotional investors. But it goes further. As part of this study, they segmented out the top performing 10% of actively managed funds. And they found that the average investor in these funds typically underperformed by 4.5% per year. That is absolutely shocking. And it's down to the fact that greedy, emotional investors flock to pass performance. And then it's not surprising that when the tide turns, they're the first ones to jump ship. And as a result, see terrible returns, which is exactly what has happened here with this ARK Innovation ECF. So clearly getting a handle on your emotions can dramatically boost your returns, but what's the best way to go about it? Well, the first thing that you need to do is reduce the number of decisions that you need to make, because every time you have to make a decision, there's a chance for your emotions to get in the way and mess things up. If you're managing a portfolio of 50 individual companies, your life is going to be a lot harder than someone that invests in a single fund. And the more that you can simplify your portfolio, the less mistakes you're going to make. Even when things get tough, it's rare for investors to actually sell out of their positions entirely. But we're much more likely to delay making new investments whilst we try to time the market in the short term. Although this may seem pretty harmless, this actually indulges your inner chimp and promotes other bad behaviors and it will also negatively affect your performance which is why you need to make sure that you set up a monthly direct debit that automatically invests for you you also need to remove yourself from the controls investing apps make it all too easy to jump in and make changes on an impulse and they can also cause bad habits where you're constantly checking your accounts if you're a long-term investor then nothing good can come from having regular access so delete that app or make it harder to log into your online accounts it's amazing how putting in that extra bit of friction between you and your accounts can rapidly change your habits and reduce stress instead you should restrict yourself to only only making changes once a year. There is no evidence that making changes any more regularly than this adds any value. The fact that you're watching this video right now shows that you are clearly taking personal finance pretty seriously. And since you have started doing that, I bet your stress levels have actually gone up quite a bit compared with before where you were just ignorantly getting on with your life and having a good time. But the more that you've learned and the deeper that you've gone into this, the more stressed you've become. But now you've made the changes and you've got your finance back on track, what you really need to do is to find a way to get back to that state of not really giving a shit, which is much easier to do when you only allow yourself to open up the controls and make the changes that you need once a year, and then you can get straight back to living your life. And finally, you need to start controlling the media that you consume. I know it's hard when the headlines you see are so shocking and the apps and platforms that we use are so specifically designed to prey on our primal instincts and keep us glued to them, consuming more content. But I can tell you right now that you will not be able to glean any actionable insight about the current state of the stock market from what you might read in a newspaper or hear on YouTube. As soon as pen is put to paper or the camera starts rolling, it's already old news. So all you're really doing is goading your inner chimp and creating unnecessary stress. Our brains are simply not built to process this amount of information at these speeds and the highly negative nature of it has terrible impacts for our mental health. So you need to be honest with yourself about the value that you're getting from the content you're consuming because your attention 
is the most valuable asset you have. In fact, it's all you have. So you need to be mindful of the way that you spend it. And on that note, I wanna take you back to one of the very first videos I ever made. In it was a very important message that will either change your whole perspective on life or it will change your whole perspective of me whilst you laugh at how bad my editing skills were. Either way, it's highly worth a watch.